I'll walk you through a processing workflow to enhance texture and bring out color detail on the surface of the moon. This typically involves stacking multiple images of the moon in order to increase the signal to noise ratio, allowing you to be more aggressive with your tonal adjustments. I have here a set of pre-processed 16-bit TIFF files, which I've created from the original RAW files. You can do this via Photo's batch job functionality. To stack them in Affinity Photo, I'll go to File, New Stack. Then I'll click Add, Browse to the TIFF files, select them all, and click Open. Now I shot these handheld, but even if you acquired your images locked off on a tripod, the moon will likely have moved during the capturing process, so you will want to leave automatically align images enabled. I will however change the alignment method to scale, rotate and translate, which is more appropriate for this type of imagery. I'll click OK to begin stacking. Alignment could take a while depending on how many images you are using and how large the image resolution is. Once the document has been created, you will see the Live Stack group on the Layers panel, currently using a median operator. I tend to switch this to Mean for slightly more effective noise rejection, but the difference can often be minuscule. Unless you want to keep the original stack, I would recommend either rasterizing this Live Stack group or flattening the document. This will significantly reduce the document file size as all the original pixel layers will no longer be saved, and it will also improve compositing performance. To begin with, I'll just use the Crop tool to remove some of the unnecessary black space around the moon. Now I'm going to duplicate this pixel layer, double click on the copy, and rename it to Base Color. This bottom pixel layer is now effectively a backup copy of the original image. I'll add a channel mixer adjustment above the base color layer. Then set the color model to gray. I'll then go to Layer, Merge Visible. And this will create a new pixel layer with this grayscale intensity conversion applied. I'll rename it to Weighted Luminosity. Then delete the Channel Mixer adjustment as I no longer need it. The objective here is to use this Weighted Luminosity layer as luminance data. It will maintain the brightness and detail whilst I manipulate color information below it. To do this, I'll set the layer's Blend Mode to Luminosity. With the Base Color layer selected, I'll then use the Auto Levels filter up here. This will help to equalize the red, green and blue color channel values. I'll also use the Auto White Balance filter. The difference is very subtle at the moment, but this will help when saturating the color detail. Now I'll add an HSL Shift adjustment with Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows. You'll need to make sure this is above the base color layer, but below the weighted luminosity layer. I'll bring the saturation shift slider up to around 40%. You'll likely want to experiment with this value for your own imagery. Now I'll close this dialog and duplicate this adjustment layer. This saturates the color detail further, but with my image, I feel the reds are now too intense. I'll click on the thumbnail to access the adjustment settings. Then I'll switch across to the reds and reduce their saturation almost all the way down. Now this may seem dramatic, but I'll then switch back across to all colors and push the saturation up further. As a result of pushing the color detail, notice that my image now has some very prominent color fringing around the edges of the moon. This is why it's a good idea to create a luminosity layer early on in the editing process. Because this layer exists, what I can do now is select the base color layer, then add a live Gaussian blur to it. I'll check Preserve Alpha, then bring the radius value up until the fringing disappears. 
This is a non-destructive process, so you can always go back in and change this value if you feel it's too strong or too weak at a later date. Selecting the weighted luminosity layer, I can then also enhance the structure or texture of the moon's surface. To achieve this, I'll add a live clarity filter and bring the strength up all the way. I'm not too keen on the way this accentuates some of the highlight detail, so I can access the blend options by clicking on the cog icon here. Then bring the right hand node on the underlying composition ranges graph down to round about here. This reduces the harshness of the effect on the brighter areas. I may also wish to perform some fine detail sharpening. A great approach to avoid artifacting, such as ringing around the edge detail, is to stack multiple high pass filters. First, I'll zoom to 100%. You should always do this when using convolution filters like sharpening and blurring to ensure an accurate preview. I'll then go to Layer, New Life Filter Layer, Sharpen, High Pass. Check monochrome and use a suitable radius depending on the image resolution and initial sharpness. For this image, two pixels works well. I'll set the High Pass Layer's blend mode to Soft Light. Then I'll duplicate it as many times as I deem necessary until the moon detail appears nice and sharp. I could also add an unsharp mask filter on top of the high pass filters for an extra application of fine detail sharpening. Using a small radius and conservative factor value to avoid over sharpening. At this point, with the Gaussian blur applying a low pass effect to the base color layer, I may not be happy with the color bleeding at the top and bottom here. This is being worsened by the two HSL shift adjustment layers. I can select both of them, then switch to the paintbrush tool, reduce the hardness to 0%, increase the width, then paint in with black over the edges here to subtract them from the adjustment masks and this will mitigate the color bleeding effect. And I will leave it there for the editing. Using these non-destructive techniques gives me the ability to revise any editing decisions at a later date. For example, I might simply hide the unsharp mask layer if I feel the final result is over sharpened. I might also go back into the second HSL shift adjustment and bring the saturation up slightly if I want to increase the color detail further. I can also select my layer work and hide it to reveal the initial image, then show the layers again to quickly compare this with the edited result. So there we go, a few techniques and ideas for a moon processing workflow. Thank you for watching.